like that song? That's a great song. For us, it doesn't matter because we're going to be home, and that's all that matters. Last week, I told you we had, we had part one, kind of like, uh, two sides of the same coin. Last week, we talked about the feeding of the 5,000 and what God can do. Now we're going to take the next story, the next uh, verses in Scripture, and talk about what faith can do as we talk about Peter walking on the water. So join me in prayer. Lord, and now open our hearts to your word, your spirit that comes through the word. Lord, speak to us to open our eyes about our faith and the faith that you call us to be and the faith that we are called to have and what faith can do, Lord, when it is grounded in you and seeks you alone. Oh, Lord God, increase our faith, Lord. We pray that just as the disciples did. In Jesus' name, amen. Peter walked on water. Now, I know he sank. The water came up in an instant. He was covered. And he was being sucked down, and he screamed out in desperation, Jesus, save me. But that doesn't change the fact Peter walked on water. I've never walked on water. I don't think any of you have walked on water. Peter actually walked on water. Faith can walk on water. Faith can heal the sick. Faith can raise the dead. By faith, prison bars are opened. By faith, there's victory over giants. By faith, the world is turned upside down. And the truth is, this is the very promise of Jesus, who said, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son." If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. The truth is, Peter walked on water. Paul raised the dead. Peter and John defied the authorities and boldly proclaimed, we will obey God rather than men. And we read in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, and what more can I say? Time is too short for me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets who by faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouth of lions, quenched the raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, gained strength and weakness, became mighty in battle, and put foreign armies to flight, all by faith. For these are the things faith can do. Faith can bring down giants. Faith can win impossible battles. Faith can build churches. Faith can change lives. Faith can heal marriages. Faith can overcome addictions. Faith can heal countries. And faith can make Satan run. The reality the question for today is, so where is that faith today? Where is the faith of the Peters and the Pauls and the Davids? And the answer is that it's right here today. It's in that room and it's right here in this parking lot. For Jesus says that if you have the faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Faith is a grain of a mustard seed. Think about that. These are Jesus' words. These are Christ's promises, not mine. 
not yours, God's promises. So why do we then see so little of this kind of faith today? Let's take a look at our text to see what it means to have faith that walks on water. The first thing that we know about faith that walks on water is that faith that walks on water knows Jesus. Peter had been with Jesus now over two years. He'd heard him preach. He had seen him work miracles. He knew Jesus more than a Messiah. He knew him as a friend, as a confidant, as a support. You see, the faith that is powerful seeks Jesus. Faith that's powerful seeks Jesus not for blessings, not for prayers to be answered, not even for forgiveness because that's all been given. No, faith that is powerful seeks to know Jesus, to know God in their life intimately and personally. It's a faith that hungers for growth. It is a faith that finds its joy in God, not in peace with the world, not in things of this world. It's a faith that hungers for Christ 24-7, not just Sunday mornings. It's a faith who wants to eat with him, to sleep with Jesus, to be close to God, to walk behind him daily. It's a faith to say, I want to watch your feet, Jesus, and follow you. It's a faith that would rather pick up a Bible, the phone, or a tablet, or a computer keyboard. It's a faith that would rather sit at the feet of Jesus and learn than sit in front of a television. It's a faith that would rather be in church than on a beach. It's a faith that would rather give itself away than seek to what the world has to offer it. A faith that seeks not just the remedy of grace, which is forgiveness, but is a, seeks the power of of grace for grace is powerful the grace of god is powerful and there is not one man or one woman who can draw close to god without grace changing their lives martin luther put it this way grace is not carried about as a painted board carries its color in other words it's not dragged around just because it has to be none of that Grace hears, it leads, it drives, it draws, it changes, it works all in a man and lets itself be distinctly felt and experienced. It is hidden, but its works are evident. Words and works are where it dwells, just as the fruit and the leaves of the tree indicate the kind and the character of the tree. Grace is powerful. This is the kind of faith, then, that walks on water. It's a kind of faith that knows God intimately, closely, and it's changed by God's grace. Now, my question for you today, honestly, to ask yourself, is that the kind of faith you truly hunger for? A faith that God changes us through his grace? Faith that walks on water knows Jesus. Number two, faith that walks on water seeks God's will, not its own. Our text tells us, Lord, if it's you, Peter asked him, command me, command me to come to you on the water. Peter did not presume to walk on the water by his own desire or his own will. No, but only at the command of his Lord Jesus Christ. You see, if we're going to be honest, far too often we seek faith, not for God's glory, but for our own. I mean, how many times have we honestly said to ourselves, Oh, if I just had faith like that, then I could... Wouldn't that be cool? 
If I had faith like that and I could, that'd be so neat. You see, faith that walks on water does not walk on water because it can. It walks on water because God commands it. Paul didn't raise the dead so people could go, wow, look at what Paul could do. Peter and John didn't make the lame man walk so people would admire them or even so they could say, look at what I can do. Faith that walks on water doesn't need miracles. It doesn't need miracles to reassure itself. For faith that walks on water does not seek its own will, but God's. I want you to be honest with yourself. I really want you to be honest today. How much of your faith is all about you? How it makes you feel. What it does for your life. What blessings does it bring to you? What comfort does it offer you? We toss about the phrase, we toss it about that says, oh, it's, it's not about me. But the truth is, for many of us, our faith is all about me. When you prayed for your grandma that she'd be healed and not die, was it really to God's will? When you were younger and you prayed for that date with that boy or that girl, can you really say it was God's will? Or when you talk about a job and you want that job as compared to this one, is it really about God's will? How often have you prayed for faith, but in truth, but in truth, what we wanted is God to do what we want him to do? How many times have we prayed for that, and yet really we're asking God, I want you to give me what I want? Because you see, you and I can make up all kinds of reasons, all kinds of reasons, but the truth is we want the miracle for us, not for him. We want the glory for us. But God does not give miracles for our benefit, but for his glory. Faith that walks on water focuses on Jesus and his will alone. For it is a faith that finds that in losing all, and only in losing all, do we find everything. Just think about that for a minute. It's only in losing all of me that I find everything. That's what Jesus said. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And again he says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And again the scripture says, And my God will supply all your needs, Every need of yours according to his riches in the glory in Christ Jesus. And again, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. You see, those are the promises. Those are the promises and the power that makes faith walk on water. And these are the promises that are yours and are mine. These are the promises that God gives you and gives to me. For when you seek faith for yourself, please understand this. When you seek faith for yourself, you will find nothing, folks. You will find nothing. But when you seek the Lord's will instead of your will, God will give you everything. That's his promise. Number three, faith that walks on water walks toward Jesus. We read in our text, Jesus said, come. And climbing out of the boat, Peter started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. Peter forgot about the waves and focused on Jesus. Because faith that walks on water does that. It ignores the obstacles and focuses on Jesus Christ. That's why Paul writes, So we are always of good courage. For we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. 
For we walk by faith, not by sight. And again, he writes, therefore, we do not give up. Even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day. For our momentary light afflictions. Now, have you ever thought of a problem as momentary and light? is producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. For we do not focus on what is seen. We do not look at the obstacles, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So you see, the truth is, is when we forget about what is going on around us, and we focus on keeping Jesus before us, that we overcome the obstacle in life. I mean, that's exactly what Jesus did. As we read about it in Hebrews. Keep our eyes on Jesus, the source and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For considered him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and give up. It's exactly what Jesus did. He focused on what's ahead. It's exactly what Paul did. As he writes, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what's behind and reaching forward to what is ahead, I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. As long as Peter kept his eyes focused on Christ, he walked on water. Think about that. As long as Peter kept his eyes focused on Christ, he walked on water. It's when he stopped looking at Christ and he began to look at the wind and the waves and the obstacles that he began to sink. Listen exactly to what the text says. But when he saw the strength of the wind, no longer looking at Jesus. When he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink out, he cried, Lord, save me. Now that doesn't mean you ignore problems. It doesn't mean we ignore the problems in our lives or that we paint everything rose-colored glasses and we act like problems don't exist and we live in la-la land. No. We acknowledge the problems, but we walk through those problems knowing they are the path to Jesus, just like those waves were the path to Jesus for Peter and that God has called us to walk through those waves. Don't deny it. David didn't deny it. He did not deny the obstacles in his life when he writes that famous passage, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me. Paul didn't go around with rose-colored glasses ignoring the obstacles. He writes, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. So that the power of God may be of so that the power may be of God and not of us. In every way, having been troubled, but not having been hemmed in, having been perplexed, but not utterly at a loss, having been persecuted, but not having been forsaken, having been thrown down, but not having been destroyed always bearing the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ in the body so that the life of Jesus might also be revealed in our body. Even Isaiah does not deny the obstacles when he writes the words that God spoke to him. But now this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. 
When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Faith that walks on water does not deny problems does not deny obstacles or hurts, but rather, faith that walks on water walks right through them, keeping their eyes on Jesus the whole way and trusting solely in the power of God's grace. Luther said this, the sin underneath all our sins, in other words, the basic sin underneath all our other problems is to trust the lie of the serpent Going back to Adam and Eve. To trust the lie of the serpent, that is, that we cannot trust the love and the grace of Christ and therefore must take matters in our own hands. That underlies it all. That we listen to Satan who tells us you cannot trust God. You cannot trust the love and grace of Jesus Christ. Faith that walks on water can walk on water because it trusts in Christ and it knows that God's grace will never, never let it fail. Number four, even when our faith fails, Jesus does not. Our text says, immediately Jesus reached out his hand, he caught hold of him and said, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Truth is, Peter didn't make it to Jesus. He sank. David fell with Bathsheba from the highest point he had. Moses knocked a rock, and it cost him going into the promised land. All of them failed. And yet God did not. Even when our faith falls and fails, God does not. Immediately, or Peter, did become the leader of the apostles and of the early church. David did become the ancestor of Jesus. And for all eternity, he shall have the king from his line reign. Moses did stand in the promised land when he was there with Elijah and Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. You see, when we fall, when we fail, when we sink, Jesus does not look away from you. Jesus does not look away from our sin. He doesn't look away from our falls. Rather, immediately, immediately Jesus caught hold of Peter. Immediately Jesus forgives our sin. Immediately Jesus reminds us of his faithfulness. Why did you doubt? Don't you know how faithful I am? Immediately, Jesus restores us to his side. And immediately, Jesus calls us again to step out on faith. Now, these words to a song, it's by a group called Casting Crowns, and the title of it is The Voice of Truth. It goes this way. Oh, what I would do to have the kind of faith it takes to climb out of this boat I'm in and onto the crashing waves, to step out of my comfort zone into the realm of the unknown where Jesus is and he's holding out his hand. But the waves are calling out my name and they laugh at me. Reminded me of all the times I tried before and failed. The waves, they keep on telling me time and time again, boy, you'll never win. You'll never win. But the voice of truth tells me a different story. And the voice of truth says, do not be afraid. And the voice of truth says, this is for my glory. Out of all the voices calling out to me, I will choose to listen and to believe the voice of truth. In Revelation, chapter 22, Jesus calls, I, Jesus, 
have sent my angels to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star and the spirit and the bride say come. And the one who hears says come. Let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. Today, Jesus is calling you to come, to step out, to walk away from your old sins, to walk over your hurts, and your pains, and the angers that have got you trapped, to walk through the difficult situation you're in so that you can see God's power for God's glory at work in your life, to walk to a new relationship with Jesus Christ. To walk into a deeper, more intimate love and knowledge of God. And to daily walk in service to God, to the church, and to others instead of to yourself. Jesus is holding out his hand. And he says, come. Come. Come, let us take the free gift of the water of life and walk on the water. For faith can. Amen. And now may the grace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus from this day forward to life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>